Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, October 16th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Nebraska game in 10 days, the game against Michigan in 45 days. I'm going to take a look, a look back at one of the crucial moments from the very end of Saturday night's 32-31 Oregon win over Ohio State. This was a penalty. It was not the offensive pass interference penalty. It was a penalty that Oregon took on defense and apparently intentionally took on defense right at the end of the game. Got the clock from 10 seconds to 6 seconds by giving up just 5 yards of field position. It was a pretty smart move, and everyone sort of afterwards was wondering, hey, was that intentional? Dan Lanning, Oregon coach on Monday, said, quote, We spend an inordinate amount of time on situations, and there are some situations that don't show up very often in college football. But this is one that obviously we have worked on, so you can see the result. Sounds like a, yeah, we did that intentionally to me and to a lot of other folks, including the folks in charge of college football rules. But now they may be making a change that college football role. We're going to be talking about that with our buddy Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. But first, what's everyone's favorite thing that we do on these shows periodically? We're going to read some rules. Now, this is not conference bylaws, but I do want to set this up with what the rule is right now in terms of substitution and having more than 11 players on the field. So uh, get out your college football rule books. We're going to be reading from page FR63 of the 2024 college football rule book. More than 11 players on the field. Article 3A. Team A may not break the huddle with more than 11 players, nor keep more than 11 players in the huddle or in a formation for more than three seconds. Officials shall stop the action whether or not the ball has been snapped. Penalty, dead ball, foul, five yards from the succeeding spot. However, that was not the rule that was applied because the players were not in a huddle. They were kind of moving in and out. It seemed like there was maybe some confusion. There was at least the appearance of some confusion. So that one was not the one that was applied. It was this next one, which is, Article 3B, Team B is allowed to briefly retain more than 11 players on the field to anticipate the offensive formation, but it may not have more than 11 players on the field. When the ball is snapped, the infraction is treated as a live ball foul penalty, live ball foul, five yards at the previous spot. So that addresses a couple things. Number one, why it was a live ball foul and why the clock ran. And number two, there were folks who were wondering, didn't that used to be a 15-yard penalty? And there were variations at different points in history where it was a 15-yard penalty has been changed. It is just a five-yard penalty now. Okay. All that said, now, obviously, college football, the folks in charge of college football do not want that to be a strategy that is a viable one moving forward because, obviously, it was a loophole. It was a viable legal strategy according to the rules as written, but the folks who are in charge of college football now saying, "Mm, maybe it shouldn't be. So, report from Ross Dellinger on Yahoo says that there could be changes on the way. Kevin Newt of BuckeyeHuddle.com joins me. Kevin, what can college football do about this? Oh boy! I mean, you can they can sit there and whether or not it's a live ball or a dead ball call. I mean, it would have all been for naught if Ohio State on that play would have gotten a big gain because Ohio State then could have because it was a live ball call could have climbed the penalty, and you know we would be having a very different conversation today, and this would not have even been noticed really in the grand scheme of things. But you could. Uh, Honestly, it comes down to the interpretation of live ball versus dead ball. It, with it being a live ball penalty, there's no way I mean, you're not putting time back on the clock because the play happened. We're going through it and the penalty has been assessed, but we're not going back in time to where a dead ball penalty, a pre-snap type of penalty would have come in and and created an instance to go back to that snapshot in time of where it was uh, at 10 seconds versus six seconds. And as we saw, This game came down to uh, fractions of a second, quite honestly. We'll never really know with, you know, how quickly a human can call a timeout at that, at such and such point, give themselves up. But uh, it it, it is a rare instance where the NCAA rules committee will go through and, and make a, make an adjustment, make a, make a fix to a rule that is being exploited mid season. That's generally done over the summer during summer meetings. So obviously there's something here because now the cat's out of the bag. Everybody knows about it. All your kids, all, all your, all the cool kids are doing it. So let's, we better bottle this genie up. So the way that they might try and bottle that genie up is with what's called an interpret, an interpretation bulletin that is every bit as exciting as the uh, rules and regulations that we will read periodically on this show. This was, uh, the, again, a Ross Dellinger report out of Yahoo. He cited Steve Shaw, who is the NCAA Secretary Rules Editor. So many exciting titles and names on the show. He said, uh, he told Yahoo Sports that the NCAA Football Playing Rules Committee is actively, quote, engaged 
in, in examining the, the play for possible action. He did say the Big Ten officiating crew handled the play appropriately. So as the rule is written, it was in, it was enforced appropriately on the field. There were some people who were wondering, shouldn't that have been a dead ball foul and no time ran off the clock? The answer from the from the committee is no, but it was enforced correctly, but obviously was not intended. The rule was not meant to allow you to do that. So they are looking at potentially doing an interpretation bulletin that would change things just even now, potentially before next week. It could potentially change lots of different suggestions on how they could do this. One one suggestion was that you could uh, just simply make it a dead ball foul, make it, you know, give the team the option of, you know, adding that time back on the clock and then still taking that five yard penalty. Another option, John Wilner, uh, who is has covered the Pac-12 for a long time, had an interesting suggestion. Give the uh, give the offense a chance to either a take a 10 yard penalty or b add 10 seconds to the clock. I can't think of any times when you could go back and add time to the clock, you can go reset to the pre, you know, what the clock was at the beginning of that play. I can't think of any times you could add time to the clock, but that was kind of an interesting suggestion to me. I mean, a little, a little bit thinking outside the box, but we got into this situation with a coach who was thinking a little bit outside the box. So maybe that's, maybe that's the right direction to go. Yeah. I mean, I, it's crazy to think of the fact of uh, putting time back on the clock. I think the, I think the, obvious answer to me is to make it a dead ball call it's pretty clean uh it's neat we're not we're not changing the actual fabric of how the game is going putting 10 seconds on the clock i mean a it's a little bit of an arbitrary number i know there's a 10 second runoff so 10 seems to be kind of you know everything's base 10 but uh it it, it feels a little artificial doing that but make it a dead ball call go back to where you know where we were i when I was reading some of the notes on all of this about it, I was trying to remember when it was a 15 yard penalty. And I just, I honestly struggle to remember that. It's always kind of been a case of where I felt it should be a dead ball call in five seconds. I guess I must have missed it at the point where it became a live call. Um, but yeah, this is something that has to be addressed immediately, honestly. Uh, will it be in time for Maction midweek? No, but will it be in time for? October 19th, which is shaping up to be a huge day of college football, Ohio State on its second bye week of the season. Uh, there are certainly going to be people there. And, and the thing is, is, a lot of games don't come down to a point of where it's a one-point differential in the final 10 seconds. Uh, Ohio State versus Akron, this was a non-issue. Ohio State versus Western Michigan, this is a non-issue. This is a very niche, specific time. But when you start playing talent equated type of games, these things can kind of happen. So you have to wonder, and you have to wonder what other things are being baked by coaches like Dan Lanning and other coaches out there of I've found a weak a weak point in the rule book and how they're going to exploit it. So it, it gives us stuff to talk about. <laughs> it does give us stuff to talk about, which is always appreciated. Boy, there's a lot to talk about coming out of that Ohio State Oregon game and the fine margins between victory and defeat for both of those teams and the big impacts that could have on both of their seasons. Uh just to sort of button this one up, the Dellinger article does say that any interpretation would likely to direct r officials to return the game clock to its original time. So the creative 10 second uh, time addition, not likely to be the actual solution they go with, but certainly an interesting suggestion that seems like just make it a dead ball foul would sort of clean things up. The rule as it used to be written, I believe was that if you were trying to get someone off the field and they didn't get off the field, that was a five yard uh, to, you know, too many men on the field kind of penalty. And if you had if you had 12 people actually participating in the play, that was the 15 yarder. I believe that was the delineation, but that changed, I think, a year or two back. But now they're going to swing the rule back at the, again another another time. Sometimes you get those uh, unintended consequences after rule changes. We'll see what uh, we'll see what unintended consequences come from whatever they whatever they end up deciding to do this week. Boy, there's going to be a lot to talk about as we continue to break down that Ohio State Oregon game. What went wrong for the Buckeyes? What went right? What it could mean moving forward? Wrote about the Big Ten tiebreakers on the site on BuckeyeHuddle.com and whether Ohio State really truly does control its own destiny to make the Big Ten championship game. The answer is, well, it's complicated. So you can find that at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We may do a show on that later in the week because that's another sort of long, interesting conversation we might have. But, but if you want, want to write about that now, you can find that right now at BuckeyeHuddle.com. 
We're going to have another Hungry Hungry Set Huddle segment coming up soon from our trip out west. Lots of interesting stuff there. Not just football, much, much more. We've been a very active and uh, involved and uh, spirited, let's say, spirited day on our board. The Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Lots to talk about around the rules, around where the Buckeyes stand right now, around where what's next, where it needs to get fixed, all that kind of stuff. We hope to see you there at BuckeyeHuddle.com as well as at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.